Hi, thanks for tuning in to Fayetteville Public Library's Preschool Storytime at Home. I'm Miss Allison, and it's great that you've tuned in today because it's October and stuff is getting kind of spooky around here. So I've picked three books for you about things that look a little scary at first, but upon a closer examination, they're not so bad. And then I've got a fun and easy upcycling craft to show you at the end. I think we should get started, don't you? Yeah. The first book I'm going to share with you today is Alan's Big Scary Tea. Alan came from a long line of very scary alligators. He was known throughout the jungle for his scaring. It was what he did best. And he looks pretty proud of himself, don't you think? Yeah. He'd start each day polishing his scales, sharpening his nails, and brushing each of his big scary teeth for at least 10 minutes at a time. And after practicing his frightening faces in the mirror, <laughs> he'd sneak into the jungle for his morning round of scaring. Alan went snap, snap, and grrr, grrr. He said things like, I'm big scary Alan, Fear my razor sharp teeth. He made the frogs leap off their lily pads, the monkeys tumble from the trees, and the parrots screech in terrible terror. Bahaha! I love being scary, he said. <laughs> After a long day of scaring the jungle animals, Alan would head back home to the swamp, relax, finish the crossword in the Jungle Times, and take out his false teeth? Nobody knew about Alan's false teeth. Good night, teeth. Sweet dreams, my scary snappers, Alan would, say, Alan would say as he put them away carefully in his super secret hiding place. <laughs> One morning, Barry the beaver was up early collecting wood and came across a dozing Alan. Terrified Alan might wake up and gobble him whole, he quickly dived behind a bush. Phew, that was close, thought Barry. Just as a set of false teeth fell out of a bush with a very familiar snap snap. When Alan awoke, his teeth were gone. My teeth, my teeth, where are my teeth? What could he do? Maybe no one would notice. Could he still be scary without them? He decided to head into the jungle as usual. He made the frogs leap off their lily pads and the monkeys tumble from the trees and the parrots screech, but it was from laughter. Alan just wasn't very scary without his teeth. Snap, snap, Grrr. Oh, look at them giggling. <laughs> <laughs> but that made Alan slink back to the swamp. He'd never been more embarrassed. He came from a long line of very scary alligators, and scaring was all he'd ever known. What would he do now? Poor Alan began to cry, just a bit at first, but then the tears kept coming. He howled and yowled more than all the jungle babies put together, and he couldn't stop crying until the next morning when all the animals turned up in a swamp with his big scary teeth. We'll give you back your teeth, said Frog. Really, said Alan. On one condition, said Parrot. You have to stop scaring us. But what will I do? I don't know how to do anything else. We have an idea, said the frog. And so every day after polishing his scales, sharpening his nails, and brushing his big scary teeth, Alan headed into the jungle. And he became a gardener. See him trimming the tree? And the hairdresser. And Alan the dentist. Well, that makes perfect sense, doesn't it? <laughs> But every night, he became Alan the big, scary storyteller, thrilling the jungle animals with his terrifying tales. Wahahaha! I love being scary, said Alan. 
and sometimes he even let Barry borrow his teeth. I love that last page. <laughs> the end. <laughs> I think that's a good start. Okay, the next one's called Something Might Happen. <laughs> Twitchly Fidget trembled all over. No, nothing had happened to him, but it might. Twitchly was afraid of almost everything. His bottle of shampoo sat unopened on the shelf. What if he got all bubbly and the shampoo wouldn't rinse off and birds would be attracted to his head thinking he was a bubble bath and they'd stay there for weeks. <laughs> he wouldn't eat a cereal because the crunchy noises might startle him, causing him to jump and hit his head on the lamp. Oh my, can't have that. He found his sneakers especially scary. Suppose he put them on the wrong feet and he had to walk cross-legged for the rest of his life. No. Twitchly lived in a leafy little hut he'd carefully designed. No windows or door. Something might want to get in. And no roof. After all, a roof could cave in. Can you see him peering over the top there? Yeah. Twitchly put a hat on his doll so its big spooky eyes wouldn't frighten him. <laughs> One of my kitty cats is thinking about coming onto the computer. You wanna come here? Come here and say hi. <laughs> That's why it's shaking. And there he sat in his dreary little hut, waiting for something to happen. Knock, knock, knock. Twitchly twitched. Somebody was at his non-door. Twitchly, called his fellow lemurs. You must come. There's going to be a parade today with drums and trombones and everything. Thank you, said Twitchly, but I'd rather not. Something might happen. Like what, they asked. Like I might get bopped with a drumstick or sucked up into a trombone. So the lemurs left for another, and for, until another day. Knock, knock, knock. Twitchly flinched. Twitchly called his fellow lemurs. You must come. There's going to be a big marshmallow roast. All you can eat. Thank you, said Twitchly, but I'd rather not. Something might happen. Such as, they asked. Such as, what if a marshmallow got stuck on my shirt and I backed into another lemur with a marshmallow stuck on his pants? And he backed into another lemur with a marshmallow stuck on her hair bow? Twitchly shivered as his voice trailed off. So the lemurs left until another day. Look at that picture. <laughs> I think that'd be really funny. <laughs> knock, knock, knock. Twitchly shuddered. Twitchly called his fellow lemurs, you simply must come. There's going to be a big 4th, July, or 4th of February party with funny hats, confetti, and even balloons. They celebrate the 4th of February and not July, apparently. Thank you, said Twitchly, but I'd rather not. Something might happen. What thing, they asked. Well, my funny hat might fall over my eyes, and I'd trip into a pile of confetti and get buried so no one could ever find me. And baboons? Even baboons? So the lemurs left. Did they say baboons? Nope, they said balloons, but he'd probably be scared of those too. Then one day something did happen. Twitchly Fidget's Aunt Bridget Fidget dropped in for a visit. I mean a visit. She was none too pleased as she rearranged her clothes. You certainly don't make it easy having visitors plunge through your non-roof, she snapped. And just look at you. Mussy hair, skinny as a snake and no shoes. You need a fixin'. Twitchly twitched. A fixin'. <laughs> Aunt Bridget Fidget squirted a large blob of shampoo onto Twitchly's head and in no time had worked him into a lather. Then she hosed him down and off came the bubbles, just like that. Twitchly couldn't believe it. Nothing happened. <laughs> now open wide, Aunt Bridget Fidget came at Twitchly with a loaded spoon. 
and as he opened his mouth to scream, she shoveled in a large serving of cereal. Stuck with a mouthful, Twitchly chewed. Crunch, crunch, crunch. Oddly, he was so taken with the delicious flavor, the crunching sound didn't bother him, and nothing happened. Aunt Bridget Fidget went on. You know, young man, what I've always said about going barefoot. Gives you dusty feet. Now on with those sneakers. Twitchly trembled. Which was the right? Which was the left? Slowly, he put the left shoe on his right foot and the right shoe on his left foot. Then, knees knocking, he stood up. And he walked, almost normally, and nothing happened. And take that silly hat off your doll. Twitchly did. Not so scary after all. Aunt Bridget Fidget eyed Twitchly, surveying her handiwork. That's an improvement, a definite improvement. And satisfied, she turned to leave. But wait, there was a problem. How in the leafy green world do you expect me to get out of here? Fly? Twitchly, feeling fluffy, full, and fashionable in his sneakers, had the answer. I wonder what that is. Let's see. With nimble fingers, he dug out a window, and then another, and finally a door. <laughs> Go Twitchly. He planted a big smooch on Aunt Bridget Fidget's furry cheek and waved goodbye. Then he set out on his own to look for wonderful parades, for marshmallow roasts, and he couldn't wait until the next 4th of February. Yay for Twitchly. <laughs> All right, one more, and then I'll show you the craft. This one's called McCumber McGee and the Lunch Lady's Liver. <laughs> In a dismal old schoolhouse down by the sea, there was a young boy named McCumber McGee. Lunch had begun and McCumber was late. He took the last napkin and took the last plate. I hope there's food or what will I do? Perhaps there are hot dogs or maybe fondue. McCumber was worried. He glanced all around. He looked for some food, but none could be found. He approached the lunch lady with great apprehension because she had warts and severe hypertension. McCumber, you're late. Do you know what this means? I've no more beef stew and no more green beans. But thankfully, McCumber, I do have something here. A very special recipe. A meal I hold dear. Hmm. It may be brown and lumpy, but please make no mistake. The flavor is delicious. Enjoy your liver cake. Ew! Blech. She put the liver on his plate, but McCumber wasn't pleased. It looked like an old bowling shoe and smelled like rotten cheese. Oh my goodness, look at that. Yuck, would you eat that? I wouldn't. Liver cake, McCumber asked. I don't mean to be rude, but I'm afraid I cannot eat this strange and smelly food. The lunch lady was shocked. This made her quite uptight. Listen here, McCumber, you must eat every bite. McCumber took his liver cake and sat down in his chair. His sister stood behind him. She couldn't help but stare. What is that, McCumber, that clump up on your plate? My lunch looked much better, and my lunch tasted great. The lady called it liver cake, and I must eat every bite. But suddenly I'm feeling weak. I've lost my appetite. Can't say I blame him. Don't you know, McCumber? The lunch lady's mean. She told you it's liver, but it might be a spleen. Some say she's dangerous and you should be afraid. I wouldn't trust her cooking or eat that food she made. You know she gets quite angry at students who are late. I've heard she cooks up rats and frogs and serves them on a plate. Goodness, said McCumber, my worst fears have come true. I must now eat a stinky glob of unknown 
lumpy goo. Ugh. The lunch lady was watching. McCumber felt her stare. He saw her grab her cleaver and wave it in the air. She's threatening me, McCumber said. Now what will I do? If I don't eat this liver cake, I'll wind up in her stew. Against his better judgment, McCumber took a bite. He put the liver in his mouth and clenched his teeth down tight. McCumber's taste buds came alive. The liver was delicious. It tasted simply wonderful, so fresh and so nutritious. McCumber savored every slice, each morsel, bit, and crumb. He waved at the lunch lady and then stuck up his thumb. Now everything was perfect in that schoolhouse by the sea. So children, please listen. Now listen to me. If your lunch is scary and lumpy and brown, if the smell makes you grimace and the color makes you frown, don't worry. It won't taste as bad as it looks because lunch ladies are usually very good cooks. And that is true. <laughs> the end. See? Not so scary. <laughs> All right, and for something else that's not so scary, we're going to make a monster craft, but these are silly monsters. I love using recyclable materials uh, and things that I have lying around my house for crafts. And for this activity, you're just going to need cardboard tubes. You can either use uh, toilet paper tubes or you can cut paper towel tubes in half and you are going to create your very own mob of monsters. I've got three for you here. Look at these guys. Aren't they funny? I love them. They make me laugh when I look at them. So all you need to do is, if you notice, I have bent the top of the tube down to kind of give it, make it look like they've got pointy heads or pointy ears. You can leave them, uh, the toilet paper tubes or cardboard tubes rounded if you like, but I just think this is a pretty funny look. And it also helps hold whatever you decide to put at the top. If you want to use funny hair or make some little antennas or things like that, uh, totally up to you. Just use your imagination and see what you come up with. I painted mine. You can use crayons or uh, magic markers to color yours. Or you could even wrap them in yarn or paper. Totally up to you. I had some googly eyes lying around, uh, but you can use buttons or you can paint on the eyes. And then I cut out these silly teeth <laughs> and then I had some colored pipe cleaners that I just twisted and twirled and I've got them just pinched inside the cardboard right there. So there you go. There's that one. Hold them up close for you. <laughs> I need to give them names. Hmm. And then this one, I used a pipe cleaner and one of those little puff balls. You can get these things at um, Hobby Lobby or Walmart or Come up with other materials. Do a scavenger hunt around your house and see what you can come up with so that you can um, accessorize your silly monsters. And then this guy has yarn for hair and it matches. He's all purple. I don't know. I think this one might be my favorite. <laughs> so there you go. You can make your own mob of silly monsters and have fun. You can even make a little story and create maybe a puppet show with them. Look at that. All right. I hope you've enjoyed this story time. I've enjoyed sharing it with you. Please feel free to take pictures of your version of the craft that you come up with and post it underneath this video on the library's Facebook page. It's always fun to see uh, what you come up with when it uh, comes to these, these projects. So that would be awesome. All right, I hope you have a very great day and I will see you again soon. Bye.